This is Living Healthy with Your Health Potential, where we explore your options for better health. Brought to you in association with the woman in you. Hi, welcome to Living Healthy. I'm your host, Cheryl Worthington Turgeon. Lyme disease has been around for several decades, and we still don't fully understand it. Meanwhile, many who have contracted the disease have been misdiagnosed and not received proper treatment until it has already taken hold. Today's guest is Lane Poor of Newport, Rhode Island, a retired music industry engineer and nature photographer. Lane was diagnosed with Lyme in 2003. This sent him on a journey of discovery, wanting to understand the intricacies of Lyme. He is currently writing a book about Lyme disease called The Three Bs of Lyme. We'll discuss how Lyme has affected Lane, as well as the progress researchers, scientists, and the medical community are making around the globe. Welcome, Lane. Thank you, Cheryl. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, we're so happy to yeah, have you good. here. It's really good. So maybe we could start with what Lyme disease really is. That's a fascinating question. And in amongst it is a lot of confusion about what the word Lyme means. Mm -hmm. um, to some, it's a, a terribly confusing um, umbrella of symptoms and, and diagnoses and, and doctors after doctor visits. Um, to many doctors, it's, it's equally confusing. In the strictest sense, the word Lyme refers to a single bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferia. Um, it's a spirochete, and it's similar to the syphilis drill. Um, and with many of the, many of the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, in the more complex version, Lyme disease actually comprises a whole series of tick-borne diseases, um, infections, um, some bacterial, some uh, parasitical, some mold, some fungus, really some, some nasty things going on. So trying to, to say with specificity that Lyme disease is one thing, I think is terribly hard. Um, in Europe, they tend to make it a little bit easier. And rather than refer to Lyme as covering all of the infections, mm -hmm. um, they'll often say Lyme Borrelia, um, okay. which means that you're just dealing with that, that one bacteria. Um, the three Bs, basically I'm taking a very simple step into understanding the complexity of Lyme. Mm -hmm. um, we commonly, as I say, call Lyme disease the infection from the, the Borrelia. Mm -hmm. um, typically in New England, we will also have a, another bacteria called Bartonella, mm -hmm. um, which is similar to uh, cat scratch fever. Um, and then throw into the pot Babesia, which is a red blood cell parasite um, literally eats red blood cells, uh, and you get yourself a symptomatic mess that's, that just basically won't quit. So that cluster of bacteria are unique to New England? Not unique, but um, you look at New York, <clears throat> and they tend to have more Bartonella than Babesia. Uh, they have more Ehrlichia, which is another one of the, one of the bugs, than, um, than, than here. Um, I wouldn't say unique, but it, it's pretty prevalent here. If you've got Borrelia here, you probably have Babesia and you probably have Bartonella. Okay. And when you're bitten by a tick, how long does it take before these bugs take hold? There's, there's a huge amount of confusion about that. Um, I think we're getting <clears throat> a very clear picture of it now. Um, for the Borrelia, um, it, the tick probably has to be attached for probably a good day or two. Um, the Borrelia lives in the gut of the tick, okay. and it takes a while for uh, the saliva to get things moving around um, within, within the tick. Um, and then the Borrelia can move up into the saliva glands, and once it gets into the salivary system, um, it can enter the body. Mm -hmm. The problem is that 
some of the other infections, um, Babesia in particular, um, part of its life cycle is being in the gut of the tick, but also there's a funny reproduction that this parasite does and it ends up in the saliva gland. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that enters your body within a couple of hours. Um, okay. it's, it's very, very quick. Um, a tick bite is a, it's a pretty complex thing, what the, what the tick does. Um, they have um, a, an anesthetic, anesthetic called, um, it's like lidocaine or, or, or novocaine. Mm -hmm. And when they first start drilling into you, they put a little of that in there so that you can't feel the, the bite. Really? Yeah. Um, wow. And then they have this sort of cement stuff, which they spit out and glue around the, the bite site. Um, so that they're pretty well attached, you can't just scratch them. But you don't you don't feel it's there, so you don't want to scratch. So it can it can get embedded mm. and start swapping all this stuff around. Um, there there is a case of a young girl um, in Connecticut who, within two hours of being bit by a, a tick, um, went into some really nervous uh, nervous uh, central nervous system problems, and mm. she was given antibiotic and that afternoon and everything was okay. So mm -hmm. we can't say that it, it, it's, it's 24 hours plus. For the Borrelia part, probably. Mm -hmm. But for the other infections, no, it can happen very, very quickly. Now, I've always heard that if you've been bitten by a tick and you start antibiotics right away, you won't develop all the symptoms of Lyme disease. Is that true? As far as we know that, and as far as I know, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, that's very true. Um, the, it's called prophylactic use of, of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as you've got two to 400 milligrams of doxy, and we'll, we'll talk about that at another time, uh, the recommended amounts of, of things. As long as you get a good healthy dose of, of doxy, for a couple of weeks, not just for two days, um, it, the, the numbers seem very clear that the, uh, the heavy duty onset of, of the, of the uh, infections just doesn't happen. And that's doxycycline. Doxycycline, okay. yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the standard now for, for, for that kind of work, both mm -hmm. here and in Europe. It's a very popular antibiotic. Mm, okay. Now in terms of the statistics on Lyme disease, um, is it on the rise? Lyme disease is very definitely on the rise. Um, it, it's multiplying very quickly. Um, not just Lyme disease, not the, just the Borreliosis, but the Babesia and the Bartonella. Um, Hudson County, New York, is, 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 just sees huge rises. Um, I, I think a good part of it is coming from, believe it or not, climate change. Um, we are, mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't cut ice um, in the middle of winter anymore. And that allows the ticks to, to winter over without being killed off. Um, oh, that's I a very see. important part of it. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's the deer population and, and that has risen a lot. Um, there are no natural enemies anymore and, and you know, numbers of places are just overrun with deer. Um, mm -hmm. and Deer ticks are part of the life cycle of, of, of the Borrelia um, and the Babesia. But the deer tick and say the typical tick that you find on a dog, now is that tick going to harbor the Borrelia as well or is it just the deer? I have just read about two cases of Borrelia being passed on by a wood tick, the big one. Um, there's some strange forms of the Borrelia showing up in the Midwest, coming mm. from, the, from the dog ticks. Um, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's spreading, okay. um, not, not just by the deer tick. Um, mm -hmm. We also have another, another tick in the area, um, the Lone Star uh, tick, mm -hmm. which looks like a deer tick, has a little white spot on it. Uh, the Lone Star tick, um, they did a, a recent survey of ticks on Shelter Island at the end of, of Long Island. And 50% mm -hmm. of the ticks there were, were Lone Star ticks. Really? Now, it's been believed that they only carry um, Starry, which is a, a, a Borrelia-like uh, disease 
usually found in the south, but it's, it's migrating north. Mm -hmm. But they're finding more and more of ticks with, with everything in them. Um, wow. It's really, That's it's really spreading. Yeah. Now, do other insects also carry the um, bacteria? Um, the Borrelia, probably not. Um, we do know that sand fleas can transmit the Bartonella. Um, and that's, that's, mm. that's becoming a little bit more problematic, too. Those numbers of cases are on the rise. Um, I think, let's go to the number of cases for a minute and the mm -hmm. statistics and the reporting. One of the big challenges to, <clears throat> to everybody, um, including the CDC, is that they have such a strict surveillance um, policy going that even they say that just maybe one out of ten um, cases is, is actually being reported and recorded. Um, so wow. when they say last year there were 30,000 cases of Lyme disease, mm -hmm. um, we're probably looking at a quarter million plus. Mm. Um, it's, it's, the whole That's thing of phenomenal. reporting is, is, a, is a big mess, um, which gets into the testing. Um, and Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, the tests, um, they're, they're, in order to test for um, the bacteria Borrelia specifically, there, there are other tests for the others, um, we typically look at antibodies. Mm -hmm. um, the things that we build against the bacteria. And it often will take many, many days for our body to start building enough antibodies that they're detectable in the blood. Um, it just mm -hmm. takes time. And typically, um, that's one of the problems is that people who get bit by a deer tick really, in terms of the early intervention, um, you don't have a lot of time and you really need to start, start the drugs. Um, another challenge with the testing is there's something called an ELISA test. Mm -hmm. um, that too is, is gives false negatives about 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so doctors are, the, the general practicing doctor is going, you know, how do I sort all this out? How do I get tests for this thing? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're waiting for the antibodies, they're not gonna show up fairly quickly. Um, there are direct tests, which are not yet well known. Um, we take a, a drop of blood and put it on a slide and put a cover sheet on it and let it sit around for six or seven hours. And as the oxygen levels drop in the blood, the drop that's there, um, the Borrelia starts coming out. And it wow. is spooky. Um, yeah, that you, is. You can come to the three Bs and see uh, videos of spirochetes exiting red blood cells. Um, mm. it's, it's pretty scary. But that's not a common, common test yet. I, I think in another six months, a year, um, we'll probably see that as a, a, a fairly useful test. The, mm -hmm. the best tests of all are, the, are really are the, come from the doctor that knows what Lyme looks like, mm -hmm. um, the Lyme literate physicians um, who can say, oh yeah, you, you your muscles in your neck are a mess, you can't sleep, you've got tremors, um, and do a, a really good clinical um, observation from the symptoms of, of Lyme. And um, those are the common symptoms? Yeah, they're, they're, there's a very long list of common symptoms, which is why mm -hmm. it gets so confusing. Um, but they come together in, in a confluence um, in a way that really to the, to the doctor that knows Lyme will we'll say, yes, that's, that's Lyme disease. Um, memory problems, night sweats, shakes, tremors. Um, once again, that's, that's something that I, I've been fascinated by and I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the overlaps of the symptoms. So in terms of symptoms, you can, a person can present with a wide variety of symptoms then. Absolutely. Right? There's tremendous confusion with that. Um, MS, uh, the symptoms list for MS will absolutely lay right over um, the symptom list for Borrelia, for Babesia, Bartonella. Mm -hmm. And doctors will often misdiagnose Lyme um, as, as MS. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know of a woman um, in the Newport group who was 
diagnosed with MS by a local hospital for five years wow. and given steroids, uh, which are pretty damaging. Um, mm -hmm. And finally, um, the tough group, uh, what I call the tough group, the Infectious Disease Society, said, well, well no, we were wrong. You, you do have Lyme disease. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Alan McDonald, who's now up at Harvard, um, has done some looking at brains, brain autopsies, mm -hmm. and found spirochetes in people who have been diagnosed with ALS, with Alzheimer's, with MS. Um, the symptoms are wow. just, they're, they're just overwhelming. Parkinson's? Is Parkinson's that too, yeah. Uh, they think Michael J. Fox's uh, Parkinson's was Lyme-induced. Um, really? Yeah. It's, the more I get into it, the more I'm beginning to understand we're, we're really dealing with a chronic infection here. Mm -hmm. um, and it can look like Parkinson's, it can look like MS, it can look like um, just age and dementia. Um, I know I went through a six-month period where I had the tremor so badly I had to eat with a spoon. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and my, one of my doctors said, well, you know, we're not sure what it is, but it could be. And it, it's not, it wasn't. Um, mm -hmm. so, it's, it's so when you first developed Lyme, can you tell me a little bit about what you went through? Oh, when I first, first got Lyme, um, it wasn't clear to me at all what was going on. I was suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. and um, had a wonderful uh, psychiatrist in Newport really trying her best to, to find an antidepressant that would, would help. Mm -hmm. um, I was feeling internally a lot of anger, uh, just brain wasn't working right, things didn't feel right, mm -hmm. couldn't make complete sense of things, but I kind of knew how things should be, so I tried to form them into that. Um, and it turns out... Um, wonderful man at, at Columbia University, Brian Fallon, um, has written a wonderful paper on neuropsychological manifestations of Lyme. Um, and he has a pamphlet for psychiatrists. And the third bulleted point is paradoxical reactions to antidepressants. Wow. And for four years, I was taking antidepressants that were doing things that were just totally wacky. Um, should not have been happening at all. And it was because I was getting encephalitic damage uh, by, the, by the spirochetes. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you find out that that's what this was? Well, a little blessing from above. I had a friend ask me to go see a film called Under Our Skin, which is one of the, the mm -hmm. famous, famous films now about Lyme. And I did. Um, and ironically, about Three months, four months later, um, my primary care physician asked me to get a cardiological test. And I did. And we found a little bit of inflammation on one side of my heart. And the cardiologist asked me to get six hours of hard cardio exercise a week. Well, Borrelia absolutely loves a low oxygen condition. Mm -hmm. And it exploded. Um, oh, no. And fatigue set in. Um, very, very scary time. I, I felt like I had fallen off a cliff into a chasm that had straight walls, no exit, mm -hmm. um, and just, just ferocious night sweats, day sweats, tremors, uh, mental confusion, um, floaters, vision problems. Um, didn't feel like eating. Um, it, it was it was it was tough. A number of months where I literally had to crawl to the bathroom in the morning to get up to oh, get going. That um, must have been the most traumatic experience. It 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 was. Um, and looking backwards, it's actually a source of strength now. But I mean, and I'm going to say this because not a lot of people will, will say this in, in, in lot, unless they're in kind of quiet line groups. There were literally days when I would wake up in the morning um, and really not care about the day, and numbers of nights where I would go to bed and I wouldn't care if I woke up the next morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's, that, it's that kind of just total depletion of, of physical and mental and, and uh, mm -hmm. psychic energy. It just, it just goes. 
Uh, that's the dark. That's the dark side. Yeah. But I did. I, I had seen the film, and was lucky enough to to have seen it, and I knew what I thought was going on. Um, I had a primary care physician who, after getting a, a finally getting a Western blot, which is one of the, sorry one of the tests, uh, finally getting the Western blot, um, and it showed that I had the Lyme uh, Borrelia uh, mm -hmm. within me. Um, she prescribed 30 days of doxycycline for me, and when I called her back, she never returned my calls. Um, that's not uncommon. Um, and why is that? Doctors are so afraid of Lyme disease. Um, there have been many doctors who have been sued by state boards for giving antibiotics for too long. Um, there's a, the Infectious Disease Society has a very strong voice. Mm -hmm. An awful lot of doctors who are just scared stiff. They don't know what to believe. Um, I know a lot of people get angry at doctors, but I, I think we have to remember that they too are, are in just as much of a confusion zone with this as, as, as everybody else. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, this works, no, that doesn't work, no, you can't do that. Um, and I, that, that's where the, 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 the war really is taking place. You've got a bunch of people that are saying, Chronic Lyme doesn't exist, and bodies walking around that are obviously uh, still, you know, completely uh, damaged by this by this disease. And what is the reason for saying chronic Lyme doesn't exist? There is a group of doctors, the Infectious Disease Society, who believes that a 30-day course of antibiotics um, is sufficient. Um, mm -hmm. They believe that the use of intravenous um, uh, antibiotics is not only dangerous, makes worse bugs, but it's totally unnecessary. And they try to, to show a lot of cases and reasons and studies about why this is true. Um, when you really start breaking into the Infectious Disease Society papers, you find an awful lot of its opinion and very little of it's based on fact. Um, the sad fact is that they get a great deal of money from NIH and the CDC and large grants, and they're, they're very well respected in their fields. Mm -hmm. um, my personal, I just gritted my teeth, my personal feeling about the infectious disease group is ultimately they're gonna be looked at as, as flatlanders. Mm -hmm. um, the world is round. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, a group of people who have been raised to high levels of societal importance mm -hmm. and you know their ego simply cannot accept the fact that, that there is something else going on. Mm -hmm. um, I often wish they just get out of the way you know mm -hmm. if you're not going to be part of the solution just mm -hmm. just stop all the, the, the noise and so confusion. now were you treated then for um, Lyme with a long term course of antibiotics? Yes, I was. I was very fortunate to have met a doctor in Rhode Island who is so swamped that he's not taking patients anymore, uh, Dr. Glor. And I was on antibiotics with him for about a year and a half. One of the things that I love about right now, and I, we, we've talked about feeling hopeful about this, is that there's this wonderful blend of naturopathic and allopathic medicine mm -hmm. that I see coming together. and. Everybody's saying, oh, well, this is, this is really complimentary. Um, many yes. of the naturopaths are saying, well, the, the antibiotics, that's, that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the regular doctors are saying, oh, wow, um, you can take wormwood? And, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's beginning, it's beginning to really, really cross over. Um, so you get the best of both worlds. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the nutritional part is... Once you start listening to your body, the nutritional part is, is very obvious. Oh, it is. Yeah. And it's going to give you the nutrients you need to be able to actually um, overpower some of these bacteria. Overpower and, and rebuild. Yeah. Um, and we, we can rebuild neurons. We can rebuild the protective sheaths around nerve bundles. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's all. That's, so someone who has Lyme and who's feeling hopeless... Um, what would you say to them? 
Well, the first thing, and I, I still use this because every now and then that happens to me, um, just remember this too will pass. Mm. Um, yeah. It's extremely difficult when your mind can't put together uh, some simple thoughts, um, when your whole world seems as though it's, it's collapsed and you try to pick up pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a great deal of hope now. Um, the, the conjunction of the allopathic and the and the uh, naturopathic is, is certainly a wonderful, wonderful thing that's happening. Um, I think being able to say, aha, this really is a problem. Um, mm -hmm. I, kn I know we're a long way from having every doctor understand what's going on, but we're getting closer and closer to that. Um, Massachusetts legislature uh, just came out with a report on Lyme disease in, in Massachusetts. And, huge step, I think, for, for a state. Um, and yes, I'd like to see some stronger recommendations about some things, but the education, just general education of the doctors in the state, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's part of it. Um, better reporting, um, you know, trying to analyze what, what's going on with, with the numbers of, of people with, with the disease. Mm -hmm. They want to take a look at the insurance problems. Um, and, so and there are basically there are many things happening on many fronts around this disease. Absolutely, um, and it, it, we still got to bring it up a bit more. Yeah. But um, Albany County in New York, and they have this wonderful course uh, that you can take. Doctors, nurses, you can take your credit, um, mm -hmm. and it's seven videos, and it's this one county that's very quietly just charging ahead. Um, so that's. Yeah, That's I mean, amazing. Yeah. And um, Lane, um, unfortunately, it's the end of the show, and I could talk to you for hours. I really appreciate you being on the show. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, it's been a, been a pleasure. For more information on Lane Poor, visit him on Facebook at facebook.com slash the three Bs of Lyme. You can also email him at the three Bs of Lime at gmail.com. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Cheryl Worthington Turgeon. See you next time on Living Healthy.